I want to go over how to hold the ultrasound probe when you're going to be doing um, a case which requires you to get IJ access, you know, access into the internal jugular vein. And, you know, this probe holding is going to be for the gaining of access into the IJ. So it, it's, a, it's a simple thing to gain access if you kind of know what you're doing. However, oftentimes people can get tripped up at the start of the case when they're holding the probe in a way that doesn't really set them up for success. So that's why we're going to spend a little bit of time to talk about this. It seems simple, but it does set the tone for the rest of the case. Now, you know, we're, we're going to be using a linear probe, and there are some fundamental things that are pretty universal when you're handling probes. You know, one is that, generally speaking, you don't want to grab the probe too high because then there's, uh, you know, this, this is not very stable and, and you can slide around quite a bit. So generally speaking, you're going to grab the probe lower and then you're going to use, you know, one way that you can do it is you can put your thumb on one side, index finger on the other side, and then you can use these parts of your hand and arm to stabilize on something. So that is kind of one thing that's important. The other is the cord. So the cord should never be in your, uh, kind of in your, f where you're working. Okay, so if you're trying to gain access from this direction, you know, you have to make sure that the cord is out of your uh, procedural field. So that's very, very important. Um, now, the thing that's a little bit more specific for the IJ puncture that it's important to keep in mind is that, you know, when you're doing an IJ puncture, either you're, you know, let's say this is our IJ right here, okay, so it's running along this way, so the patient's head will be up here, feet will be down there, and let's say you're standing at the head of the bed, and you're scanning like this, depending on what type of case you're doing, either you're going to gain access kind of in a dimension that's parallel to the long axis of the vessel, or you're going to go perpendicular. Now, let's say um, that you're going kind of, you're going to gain access from this direction. The way we held the probe, this is great. So you can hold it like this, you can put it down here, very stable, you're resting your hand on something secure, and what's great about this is when you grab the, we'll just make sure we're, we have a good target there, when you're grabbing your micropuncture needle, what you can do is just come from the side and you can see the probe very clearly. There are no issues. Your fingers are not in the way. So this is very straightforward. This is great for gaining access in that direction. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the majority of the time that you're gaining IJ access, you're standing like this and, um, you know, your hand actually may get in your way because Oftentimes, we're not going this direction. We're actually going to be puncturing parallel relative to the long axis of the vessel. So it's not to say that you can't do this. However, if you were to do this, the issue is because you're holding lower on the probe to keep it secure, your thumb actually kind of inhibits your view of what's going on um, under your thumb. So it's a little, you know, it's, it's very doable, and a lot of people do do it successfully this way. However, it is worth thinking a little bit about kind of repositioning yourself um, in the ultrasound machine to give yourself uh, opportunity to puncture in a different way. So for example, if you are doing this type of a puncture, it can be useful to actually hold the probe like this. You know, you can have your thumb on one side and then your um, index and middle finger on the other. You can, you can support yourself here, but you can actually scan like this However, you can see that if we're standing this way, it's really not practical. You know, you kind of have to do something very uncomfortable with your wrist to be able to do this. So you may want to think about kind of repositioning things. You know, in this video, we're going to move the patient, but in real life, you would move yourself and where the ultrasound machine is to kind of maintain this, you know, um, ease of viewing the screen. So you may have to go on the other side of the patient. So now the patient's head is up here, legs are down there, and you may have to move your ultrasound machine so that you can scan, you know, in the same plane. Let's find a good target here. And then now you can just come around here and gain access very easily. 
So the advantage of this is I can see the center of the probe here. Nothing is obstructing my view. I can go very close to the probe with my axis needle. Um, and it's just, uh, personally, I think this has a lot of advantages because your fingers are not obscuring your view. But again, I am not going to be standing at the head of the patient now. I'm going to be standing on the other side and I need to make sure that there's room for my ultrasound screen right across from me um, before I attempt to do this. Otherwise, I may have to crane my neck if the screen is over there. So for example, you know, with our original orientation, if I was to stand over here, then I would have to look over to the side as I try to gain access, and it's not really as natural of an angle. So the, the moral of the story here is that depending on what type of puncture you're doing, if you're gonna go you know, long axis or perpendicular to the long axis of the vessel, you wanna think about how you're setting up the room, how you're setting up yourself, your machine, and really how you're gonna hold the probe and the consequences of how you hold the probe. Ultimately, it's probably best to be comfortable doing it both ways because you may not always be in a position to set up the room the way, you, the way you'd like to. Um, or you may have to kind of adjust and think on your feet. So it's, it's important to just understand there are multiple ways to hold the probe and they have advantages and disadvantages. And really what you want to maximize is your stability. Make sure that the cord is not obscuring where you're working. And then, you know, depending on what you're doing, if you can structure things in such a way that the, your fingers are not between your needle path and where it needs to go, um, that can also be advantageous.